One of the most shocking events of Joseph Stalin's time as the leader of the Soviet Union was the fact he ordered a huge purge of the population. It resulted in the deaths of between 700,000 to a million people. In an attempt to brutally eliminate any member of the Communist Party, Stalin deemed to be a threat or a dissenter. The motive behind the Great Purge was to enforce Stalin's authority and to build upon his power. It was the NKVD, the Soviet secret police who carried out many of the executions, and the head of the NKVD at the time was Nikolai Yesov. It was he who was responsible for organising the mass arrests, the brutal tortures and the executions during this time, but like so many, Yesov himself would fall from grace and would be executed in 1940. So join us today to look at the brutal execution of Nikolai Yesov, Stalin's great purger. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Nikolai Yesov was born on the 1st of May 1895, and it's claimed he was born in St. Petersburg. He tried to portray himself as a member of the proletariat, however it was found during his interrogation that he was from a well-off Russian peasant family, his father having a number of jobs, including being the head of a brothel. Nikolai completed his elementary schooling before working a number of jobs including being an assistant to a tailor, but he then entered military service. He first served in the Imperial Russian Army, but in 1917 he joined the Bolsheviks months before the October Revolution, and during the Russian Civil War he fought for the Red Army. He continued to rise throughout the military, and also the political ranks, as he was involved in regional committees of the Communist Party. Following his work as a secretary, he then worked in the accounting department of the party, before becoming the head of the department, and then transferring to become the Deputy People's Commissar of Agriculture. He continued to rise throughout the Communist Party, taking many different positions, and eventually was elected to the Central Committee, before becoming the secretary. However, one of the biggest moments of Yesov's political career came in the aftermath of the 1934 murder of the Bolshevik chief of Leningrad, Sergei Kirov. Following the murder, Stalin used it as an excuse to order purges, and he saw Yesov as a man capable of performing out these bloody tasks. He oversaw accusations in the murder that justified the purges, and he eventually then became the chief of the NKVD, the Soviet secret police. He became the People's Commissar for International Affairs, and as he was a devout follower of Stalin, he seemed okay with carrying out purges and executions that reduced the power of any political opponent. His first job was to investigate the former director of the NKDV, Jemrit Yagoda. He ordered a show trial, and Yezov then ordered NKVD agents to put mercury on his curtains inside of his office, and this allowed evidence to be gathered. Yagoda was accused of being a German spy, and it was claimed that he had plotted to kill Yetsov and Stalin by poisoning both of them. The aim of this was to restore capitalism, and Yezov himself tortured Yagoda to get a conviction. Later Yagoda was shot after the execution was ordered by Yetsov, but it wouldn't be the only execution that he would order. The great purge to rid the Soviet Union of any dissenting people against Stalin was carried out most prominently during 1937 and 1938. Anyone who was considered dissenting was liable to be executed by firing squads at Yezov's disposal. He quickly became the most feared person in the whole of the Soviet Union, only behind Joseph Stalin, and during the purge, around 50% of the Soviet government's officials and officers inside the military were stripped of their ranks and jobs, and some were sent to the gulags the infamous concentration camp system established in the Union. Many were executed very quickly and were not even imprisoned, and a huge amount of the Soviet population, ordinary members of the public found themselves accused of being disloyal to Stalin and the government. Anyone suspected was interrogated, sometimes tortured, imprisoned, sacked from their jobs and then executed. Many of these people were falsely accused, and later Yezov would admit there will be some innocent victims in this fight against fascist agents. We are launching a major attack on the enemy. Let there be no resentment if we bump someone with an elbow. Better than ten innocent people should suffer than one spy get away. When you chop wood, chips fly, insinuating that some innocent people needed to be slaughtered to successfully carry out the purge. During 1937 and 1938, 
Well over 1 million people were arrested and nearly 700,000 were shot, being accused of crimes against the state. The amount of people inside the gulags also rose dramatically during Yezov's time as the chief of the NKVD and around 140,000 of those prisoners would eventually die from their treatment, lack of food and exhaustion. So Yezov instilled a brutal reign of terror for Stalin, but he himself would fly too close to the sun, and like so many would find himself too purged from Stalin's government. He had managed to exterminate the old Bolsheviks and disloyal parts of society before the Second World War began. But Stalin just used Yezov like a pawn in a game of chess. He deemed him to have done his job, but he thought he had too much power himself. It was at the hands of the infamous NKVD chief, Lavrenti Beria, that Yezov would be ousted himself and would be executed. Beria somehow managed to survive the purge, as Yezov ordered his arrest. He was spared by Stalin, and Stalin took a shine to how efficient Beria was. He would become Stalin's chief of the NKVD, and over the next few months, he began to oust Yezov in terms of his power. Yezov knew what was probably coming, and he knew that his downfall and death would soon come. With this, he predicted his imminent death, and fell into alcoholism to cope. He became a drunk and a man who in his final days, refused to go to work at the NKVD, and Stalin, as predicted, then began to slate the work of the NKVD under Yezov, publicly giving excuses for his removal from power. Some of his best agents then disappeared in an attempt to save their own lives, and Yezov warned one of his closest advisers that he too may be subject to persecution. He then told his wife he wanted a divorce and was removed from his job with the NKVD on the 25th of November 1938. Beria then assumed ultimate control within the secret police, and Stalin initially ignored Yezov, but then asked Beria to slander him at the annual conference of the Supreme Soviet. He was removed later in 1939 of all his positions, and on April the 10th was arrested and taken to prison. It was said that his arrest was done in utmost secrecy, and it was done away from the view of the general public, and also the NKVD officers, to ensure there was little resistance. He was interrogated, and during this he admitted to have been an enemy of the people. He knew himself what would come during his interrogation, and he knew that his execution would soon come. Nikolai Yezov admitted theft of government money, treason by collaborating with Hitler's Gestapo and gross incompetence. He was then placed on trial in a closed trial, and he outlined his love for Stalin, and said he would do anything for him. He denied what he had admitted to, saying that he admitted to all the charges as he was tortured, and said that he carried out Stalin's great purge, with nothing but admiration for him. He also said that when he died, Stalin's name would be his final words. Following the trial he was taken away, and was then called back in 30 minutes later to hear the verdict. When this happened, he collapsed, and he knew what was happening. Nikolai Yesov, Stalin's once powerful NKVD chief, was condemned to die. There was an appeal for clemency, but this was denied, and he was then dragged out of the room, screaming and crying. On the 4th of February, days after he had been condemned to die, Nikolai Yetsov was executed. He was taken to a basement inside of a small NKVD station inside of Moscow. This basement was almost a purpose-built execution chamber, as it had been built in such a way that had a sloped floor. This meant that once executions took place, and there was much bloodshed all over the floor and the walls, it could be hosed down easily and cleaned. It's even said that Yezov had this chamber built to ensure executions during the Great Purge were performed efficiently in quick fashion. There was a main execution chamber inside of the basement of the station, but it was avoided to ensure that Yesov's execution was under complete secrecy. He was lined up in a small room, and an executioner, either the infamous Soviet executioner Vasily Blokhin, or Ivan Serov, the future KGB chairman, stood behind him with their weapon primed. They then shot dead Yezov, and quickly the execution chamber was cleaned up to ensure no one knew what happened, and his body was then dragged out of the building and immediately cremated, with the ashes being placed into a common grave. Interestingly, his execution stayed a complete secret for a number of years, with many in Soviet society believing he had been committed to an asylum for his alcohol addiction. Nikolai Yesov was Stalin's brutal chief of the NKVD 
carrying out the bloody Great Purge. However, he became known as a vanishing commissar, as he was erased from history, in a sense, and Stalin even ordered that official press photographs should be altered to show him as simply not there. He was a man who would brutally carry out Stalin's orders, but like so many he was also purged, and he was turned on. His downfall was calculated by Beria and Stalin, and his execution was done in utmost secrecy. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.